Oh, here we are, folks. All right, I think I'll look at the camera now. We have a, a special guest. Well, almost special. We have Douglas Greedy, uh, Reedy from, well, you work at a bank. You're Greedy, right? Douglas Greedy, uh, Reedy, who works at uh, Middlesex Savings Bank in Westford. They moved his uh, desk inside this week because it got a little chilly. And uh, we have Audrey O'Brien again. Let's give Audrey a hand. Oh, that's Audrey. Go yeah, all right. Audrey has another review today of a show we don't want to watch. Okay. That's true. All right. Uh, I'm here. You're here. Nikki I'm always Penta. here. Nikki Penta. I never leave. You okay. <laughs> and uh, we have Rabbi uh, Rosenberg over there who uh, wants, he just got his voice back. Let's hear the booze. <laughs> That's booze, not booze, Rabbi. All right, we're going we're gonna to start it. We're going to. That's not like we're a school. Gonna. We're going to start out today with an interview with uh, Haley uh, uh, LaPointe. No, and she doesn't play hockey. Mm. Haley LaPointe, who's a meteorologist, uh, basically in the evenings, weekend, I believe. But she does appear sometimes uh, during the week. And uh, she's from WMUR in beautiful Manchester, New Hampshire. All right, here we go. Hey, I'm here with you. Well, we're here, right? We're here with uh, Haley. I... Now, do you play hockey, Haley? With a name like that, somebody should. No, no one in my family. What about your husband? Tell him we can't hear it. Sorry. <laughs> he doesn't? All right. You were, you're a, uh, you do the meteorology, you wanted them on uh, Channel 9, WMUR, oh. beautiful Manchester, New Hampshire. My, most people, if you went to South Carolina, they'd think it's Manchester, England. <laughs> but you know, you know how it is. So yes. you, you, uh, you, uh, you went to Linden State, right? I did. Um, so I grew up in Topsfield, Massachusetts. Nobody grows up there. I'm a native of the North Shore of Boston um, and knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a meteorologist. And so did I. Um, so Great. it was probably like kindergarten or first grade. I was and, seven. Um, and then all throughout you know, elementary, middle, uh -huh. and high school, I studied meteorology on the side or in my classes. Um, I even did the weather on like the morning announcements that they had. Um, Kind of was a weather geek, um, and kids even would uh, make fun of me a little bit for all of my my love for weather. Well, you sh um, you showed them. Proved to be a very good thing because I'm living my dream and um, doing the thing that I love to do every single day. Am I living my dream? Yes, you are. You're making television. I'm living my. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, L Linden State is it? It's a university now, right? Actually, it, no, it's still in It's still a college? Um, oh, it's Plymouth that became a uh, university. Yeah, Plymouth State. Because yeah. they couldn't spell college anymore, so they tried university. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a very small school, Linden is. Uh, I think about 1,500 undergrads. Um, but it was the best place to go because they have, along with a very good meteorology program, they also have a great television studies. Now they call it electronic journalism, but... At the time, it was TV studies program. Of course. Where they actually do a live TV broadcast every night. Um, so they work with the meteorology department to allow the students to do weather. So, this is Vermont, right? Yep. So when I, you know, when I graduated, I already had real life experience on TV. So that was a. But well, when I graduated, we didn't have TV. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well. It, you know, I was with George yeah, Washington yeah. crossing the Delaware. You know. I'm the guy in the back of the boat telling him to sit down. Oh, okay. Remember that picture? Okay. So you got interest in that. You lived on the North Shore, which is very exciting, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very exciting. I, <laughs> I love the North Shore. I actually was born in Falmouth. We don't talk about that. My, uh, Falmouth? I, that's on the Cape. Oh, yeah. that's not on the Cape. It's, it's close. Yep. Yeah, uh, my, my dad worked um, for a radio station in Plymouth. Um, and did sports on that station for a while. And um, my mom was a journalist as well for a time. She went to Emerson. So I guess I was kind of born to be in broadcasting. That's good. I, what was I born to do? You were born to drive us all crazy. <laughs> I was born, well, I'm doing a good job of that. What the heck, huh? I've succeeded in life. They're crazy here. Yeah, well, the way you look, I wouldn't say that. Oh, not you, this guy over here. Anyway. All right. So, uh, what you, you know, uh, you, you were at what in Plattsburgh? Beautiful Plattsburgh, right? Uh, and it made it across to Burlington, right? Um, 
Yeah, so I started my career actually in Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, why? Yeah, yeah nice. well, you know, everybody goes to Fargo. Huh? Yeah, believe it or not, it was one of the best decisions um, because it has New Hampshire and New England weather, but to the extreme. So, um, you know, there are tornadoes. I've seen five tornadoes in my time when I was out there. I went storm chasing. Um, was there during the very uh, bad Red River flooding, if you are familiar with that, in the around 2008, 2009. The city was actually threatened. It almost got washed away. Um, Would someone have noticed if it had got washed away? Yeah, it, it, it was bad. It was really bad. Um, but it proved to be good for me to get experience. Um, so I spent two years out there. And then I went to Plattsburgh, which is in the Burlington. Yeah, it's across the lake, right? It's across yeah, Lake across Champlain. A ferry ride across. So, um, and I spent three years there doing weekday morning weather. Oh, so you got up at what, sun? You, you were falling asleep again by sunrise. You get up at what, two in the morning, three? Yeah, I, um, I would wake up at 1.30 actually. Oh. Um, and I still do that today if I fill in in the morning. So actually last week, I worked for our, our meteorologist, Kevin Skruba. I worked for him Thursday and Friday and woke up both mornings at 1.30 in the oh, morning. How so, exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but you're usually on the weekend, evening? Is yeah, that right? that's what I, I guess my title is. I'm the week, weekend evening meteorologist. Um, so I do the 5, 5.30 and 6, and then the 11 o'clock shows on at, on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, good. You, uh, what, what's your opinion of the uh, non-winter? We missed that storm, so. Um, so all from you know the beginning, um, from the fall, of course, we're asked about the winter all the time. I go to school visits all the time, at least three a week, actually, and they're always asking, "What is this winter going to be like?" Or now. What is going on with this winter? Well, essentially, we have a very strong El Nino going on. Um, and so far, the forecast that we put out in September, October of a wet, somewhat milder winter is really coming true. Somewhat milder? <clears throat> Even February's, uh, January's been above normal. Uh -oh. All that it was, was there was high pressure to the north of us mm -hmm. that diverted it away. Um, if that high pressure had just moved slightly, if it had broken down more, had moved to the east a little bit more, we would have had the exact same thing that, you know, New York, Philly, Philly, um, Philly, and Washington, uh, Baltimore, Baltimore, and D.C. had. So um, it was all about just the play of the low pressure systems R and the high pressure systems. Originally, they had the high farther out to the east. Yep. Yep. It, yeah. Um so it was the Sunday before, so a week ago yesterday, that I was looking at the computer models, and it looked like we were going to get bombed. It looked like we literally were going to get yeah. 80 inches of snow. Um, it looked like that Monday. It looked like that Tuesday. And then all of a sudden, they shifted, uh, I believe, during the 12Z and 0Z runs on Tuesday into Wednesday that they started to shift the storm southward. But I know for you guys and for... Um, you know, for Massachusetts, it was a very difficult forecast. I mean, no one, the best meteorologists out there would not have been able to give you a perfect forecast for every town in Massachusetts. Yeah, well, I live in Westman. We had the fairy dust occasionally, and that was it. And you could see the uh, brightening to the north the whole time. Yeah. What did and Manchester have? Nothing? Lake either. There was nothing. So, mm. um... You know, it made my life easier because I was able to see that coming, mm -hmm. that it would be nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that, was a, that was a tough situation for Southern New England meteorologists, for sure. No, that's how you earn pay, you know. <laughs> yeah. But back to your original question, uh, I fully believe that the rest of the winter will be similar to what we've had. In fact, some of the latest um, forecasts for February from the National Weather Service and NOAA have us again being yeah, uh, above normal above average correct so um you know it, it's it's not looking like a very snowy year i think concord only has 12.4 inches of snowfall we usually average around 60 inches that's close um yeah it's yeah. 
it's quite, um, and certainly compared to last year too, it's a stark. Well, if you add the two together and divide by two, you're about normal. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's how we do it, right? Exactly. Uh, so our forecast was below or just close to average snowfall, but at this point it definitely looks like, you know, pending what happens, we could get one big blast like that one storm. Yeah, I could grow hair too, but I don't think that's happening. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So, sure. and, you know, a year ago to this day, we were you we know, had nothing. in storm prep mode for a big blizzard that came through. Yeah. So, um, you know, things can always change dramatically. But so far, the trends are keeping it um, with milder conditions. Is that your workman there making noises? No. Uh, I think, uh, I think, the, that's I think it's the dog. The dog's What's it? Oh, Doppler's making noise. Uh, we've got, uh, we've got, it's a, a pest guy, and he's like spraying around the outside the house, so Doppler's on alert. What's he spraying? I, I actually, he's not, I don't think he's spraying, he's just looking at all the different traps and things that we have. <laughs> traps? Yeah, they put like, they put like these termite traps. And I don't think you got to worry about termites this time of year. I don't even, they, I don't know what they're doing. That's well, he doesn't like, either, so don't worry about it. Traps. <laughs> Traps, okay. All right, what's your favorite type of weather? I like snowstorms. Okay, I'm a severe convective um, storm girl. Oh, no, is that legal? <laughs> severe <laughs> convective, oh. No, I, I love supercells, I love thunderstorms, I love tornadoes. Um, so I, you know, growing up, as I mentioned, I had a love for weather, and it was purely because of tornadoes, actually. So um, I was fascinated with them. I wanted to go storm chasing. Uh, ended up did doing that a few years ago. Um, so that's that's the weather that gets me really excited. Right. Of course, if it's a snowstorm, you know, I get a little excited about that too. But um, a good thunderstorm, possibly, you know, a tornado warning with a storm. Really oh, good. yeah. I mean, you want to see the house blow up. What the heck, huh? Well, no. That's always... That's you know. always of course, no. I want the tornado to be in an open field, even away from crops, not doing any damage. But um, oh, you mean in the plains, in the middle of nowhere? Because around yeah, here, it'll hit yeah, something. Pretty much where we saw them, we went chasing in um, Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma in one day. And that's in one were. day? Oh, it was good. In case you don't know, he, he that gentleman with me. No. He, wa he wants to go storm chasing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, especially if one's heading right for you. Yes, sir. I'd be going the other way. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, let me know. My, uh, my husband and I, as I mentioned, my husband's a meteorologist as well. He doesn't work on TV. Um, but him and I do have plans to head out there at some point and go chasing again. So. Well, what is he, where does he work? He works for WSI. Um, oh, Weather Services International. Yep, um, in Andover. Beautiful Andover, yes. Um, mm -hmm. And he works on, so you're probably familiar that they they do the graphics for the broadcast. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um, all the broadcast um, software that I used to make my, like, seven-day, my, my graphics. He um, does software quality assurance for those graphics. So he's got a, a kind of a cool job. Okay. Well, I don't. Oh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, I'm getting the signal to uh, wrap my head up here, oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, do you have anything else to say? Like, uh, like you know what? No, we have anything else. Uh, I got one question. You know these people that now they're moving their hands all over the place. You know what I mean when they're doing the weather? Some of them. Yeah. And after yeah. a while, you're just watching the hands. You know what's going on? Why do they do that? Why do they do that? We. We do get um, some coaching as to what we should and shouldn't do on air. Um, I've never been told that I do any crazy hand motions. Oh, but some of them go, it's all you do. Hey, you want to do this here? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm usually pretty conservative. I don't even really like, I'll do like a point or something like this. Yeah. Um, very, very casual and deliberately as if I'm actually pointing at something mm -hmm. on the map. Um, it's really, it all comes down to their personality. Um, if somebody likes to talk a lot with their hands, they will. Um, but we do have some consultants and coaches that will come in and help us with our on-air performance from time to time. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for uh, appearing on this uh, bombastic show here. <laughs> you know, You're and... welcome. 
I hope I answered your questions and thank you for your time. Well, thank you. Have a good time on Channel 9. Uh, okay. And I look forward to uh, talking to you again in the future. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye. Okay, we're back here at beautiful TV Central. All right, you want to you have a quickie here about sure about the floral lots. Go ahead. And a plug for uh, the best coffee in the world: locally roasted beans, every espresso, latte, and cappuccino, freshly ground to order. Try us once and see what you've been missing all along. Of course, Valentine's Day is fast approaching. Yes, I know that the birds are going to leave me. Fresh spring tulips, roses, hydrangea, and many other flower varieties from around the world. Call or visit us at floralarts.net and at stemandbean.com. You better call. You better spell stem and bean. Stem, as in flower, and bean, B-E-A-N. Okay, thank you very much. Floral arts over there in Western. All right, knock it off. Let's go quickly to uh, what you. Let's go to our almost guest here today. Yeah, uh, almost, Mr. Doug. What do you What do you got <laughs> for sports? Yeah, I, I predicted uh, Denver would win, and they did. Well, I mean, I was hoping uh, last month when you asked me to come on the show and. I foolishly agreed. Um, Wait that a minute. I was Did you say <laughs> foolishly? <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, um, well, we would be talking about a Patriots, uh, another Patriots Super Bowl preview, but that didn't happen. Thank you. So uh, what, are you, what are you picking for the Super Bowl? Uh, I'm going to take uh, the Panthers, 38, Denver, 28. Where do you um, come up with these numbers? They came to you in your sleep? Well, they have the best offense in the league versus the best defense in the I league. I think their quarterback is offensive, too. Oh, he got a touchdown. He goes down the field. He gets points, and <laughs> that's all that matters. Most people just flip the ball to the uh, referee and go, okay, all right, we won. All right, we got a touchdown. Well, you know, what position on. did you play? In, in Left football? out. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I was safer that way. No. Yeah. I was going to play football, but fortunately my uh, high school didn't have a football team. You were the mascot, I thought, right? No, I was third base. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was going to be home plate, but the bat hurt. You know? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, who, who's going to win the National League East now that, now that the Mets have Despotus for the rest of us? As much as it uh, pains me to say, I'd have to take uh, your Mets. You're darn right you yeah. would because they're good. Great pitching staff. Now they got hitting. Yeah, they uh, shorted up. I don't, I don't know how uh, great Cespedes is going to be in the field. Uh, who cares? Not... We know about that. We have a fast left fielder and a fast right fielder. They're going to shove him out of the way. He's going to play shortstop. There's nothing fast in baseball. Oh, they're, no, not the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, well, he's, he's going to be center. out there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how long. Uh, he occasionally has uh, brain cramps, but that's all. Oh, the ball. I better go. <laughs> but the left field is very fast. So is the right fielder. Thank you for those. And you can come back any time. Thank especially you. Especially when we're not taping. Yes. All right. No, oh, very good. Give him a hand because... <laughs> Okay, you're driving the dog crazy. We have 42 dogs here today. We're <laughs> one in the car. Audrey, what? Uh, what? You, you, Audrey's doing a review of a show. Go ahead, Audrey. Uh, this is kind of Very old good. show. Thank you, Audrey. Oh, okay. <laughs> What do you got for that? <laughs> I was just going to do, because I watch it. I just watched all the episodes they have on Netflix of Cutthroat Kitchen on Food Network. It's not a good show. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I just, I watched It's one of those shows that everyone I've spoken to, you start watching it and you hate it because it's like this weird show where they have start with money and then they have to sabotage each other by betting on things. And I hate it because it involves it, math. And it's and involves, Food Network? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they, cook, they, they, cook, they cook. They cook. They cook. The sabotages like are. They have to like. They'll be like, okay, make a burrito, and they all have sixty seconds to run to the pantry to do all their shopping, and then they do sabotages, and they all start off with twenty five thousand dollars. So they all bid on these sabotages and sabotage each other. Is this reality TV. Yes, my favorite like, kind uh, of television. It, it, it Bugs Bunny would say sabotage. I guess. He would. Oh, sabotage. Yeah. He said sabotage. Never mind. I don't know if he says that in Space Jam, and that's no, my, probably not. No, I'm primary. Well, thank you for that yeah. wonderful review of a show that nobody wants to watch. No, I'm not saying no one wants. It's a popular <laughs> show. A lot of people watch well, that it. That doesn't mean anything. Hitler was popular in Germany. I don't think that's a proper analogy. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Yesterday was uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Did you just make that up? No, it was no. Okay. Well, and the rabbi didn't even know it. No, and and uh, Obama, our president, managed to find the Israeli embassy. How do you do that? <laughs> Probably got directions from uh, an Arab down the street or something. Oh All right, God. break out the water. Saudis like them. All right, now we have a uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I tell you, what a review. My yeah. God. <laughs> thank you. The audience, let's go. Ra, Ray, bravo, bravo. They're not paying. Well, the dog's going. The dog's confused. So <laughs> yeah. we're right. Now, Rabbi, uh -huh. you have, what song are you going to sing for us? Um, oh, by the way, thank you. Next time, this time, <laughs> next time. That was quick. That was a good song. Next thank time, you. this time, next time. 
We're going to have uh, uh, Kristen. I got it right. There you go. Kristen, uh, Kristen Clark, who uh, owns uh, Two Wheel uh, Weather out of beautiful Minneapolis. All right. So she'll be on next time. What she'll be talking? What is she what talking am I about? Praying here? What? What is she talking about next time? She, her business. Okay. She's a meteorologist. Okay. Her husband's uh, studying to be a dentist. I said, good luck. <laughs> he confuses himself. You know. See. <laughs> All right, goes around the house drilling walls. Moving on. I'm Moving on. I'm All right, Rabbi, what do you got for us? Hi, <laughs> so I, I have two songs for Valentine's I Day. I don't have time, Rabbi. We're going to be on on February 11th. Yeah, but it's not going to uh, reach the internet in time for Valentine's Day. Yes, it will. Want to bet? No. Okay, good. <laughs> so I have two You're songs right, for Valentine's won't. Day. Yes. Um, one is a song for friends, because I have a, a friend who made a long trip. Marie, please get up. Me today. Let's give Marie a hand. Marie, hey, all right. Marie flew in from uh, Caracas, Venezuela. And, and, and there is a, the romantic is the Valentine's Red Day Eye? song, which I uh, wrote for my wife before she became my wife. And she slapped the heck out of you, too. And she married me anyway, so I guess... No, it was meant good. for somebody else, but, you know, what the hell. So <laughs> Why waste a bad song? I mean, a good one. So the first Go right ahead. Song you got 656. Is... Uh, I want a better price. The first song is called Friends. It's like you gotta have friends. Mm -hmm. What is this song? You gotta have friends. Mm -hmm. There are friends who are quick. There are friends who will sympathize when you blame other folks for where you are. But these friends aren't very wise. They don't see that it doesn't get you far. Misery may love company. But it sure doesn't set you free. There are friends who are quick to do anything that they must to keep you there. There are friends who will stick with you, though it seems like you make a funny pair. Their intentions are good, it's true, but you need what is good for you. Stick with a friend who can lend you a smile. Like one of the tribe, that's my style. Friends with a drive to fulfill their own lives. When their hearts begin to welcome you, there's nothing more inviting. If they lift you, it's a gift you should embrace. a gift you should embrace. You know, that cold has done hey, wonders bravo. for your voice. That's it. Isn't it? Thank you. It, you know, you should thank quit you. now. It's the best I've ever heard from you. Well, thank you. I'll thank you, Rabbi. I tell you, you ought to get sick more often. <laughs> yes. By the way, I was told, hi there, I was told the light came on. And I, w I was looking at the dog that's walking around here. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Tell everybody there is a dog here. She, she's my bass player. 
Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter anyway, with her today? She's the confused. The second song oh, yeah. is called Thank You for the Room, Mariesa. By the way, by the way, uh, yeah. uh, this upbeat is great. Oh, thank you. This is a ballad, but thank you. Oh, well, that's it. That's, that's taking this back. <laughs> Marie, what do you think? Huh? Pretty good? Well, she loved it. How much did he pay you? You weren't the inspiration for that first song. But yes, I was. Thank you for the moon, Mariessa. How you look at things. Thank you for the moon. How your laughter sings How you tease me And how you ease me inside Thank you for the moon, Mariessa How you greet the sky Thank you for the moon, Mariessa how you meet my eyes like the ocean your soothing motion has come to take me for a ride we go into warm waters and we settle down and your hands tell me stories as we circle around Tell me stories as we circle round. Thank you for the moon, Mariessa, and your winning grin. Thank you for the moon, Mariessa, and the mood I'm in. How you hold me and how you've sold me on giving, loving. All right, thank oh, you. All right, excellent. All right. All right. Well, we, so we, have, we have no time for anything, so there you go. Excellent. Thank you. Your dog's walking into the wall back here. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> Woof yourself, bucko. You By the way, your wife's name is Marilyn. How did this it's work Marilyn. out? It's Marilyn. Marius is a Hebrew name. Well, tell the audience that, for crying. But we're Marius off. is a Hebrew name. We're off Thanks, already. Eddie. Thank you for running <laughs> over, <laughs> sir. Thank you. Who'd I run over? The time. She's going to run you over when she yeah, get but, outside. But I finished my song before the show ended, yeah? Unfortunately, you oh, did. I think... Like, exactly on time. Sir, yeah. are we still on? Are we, Let's we're on? wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Oh, we're still on. I was going to announce... Can I announce my... Uh, make an announcement, please? Quick, all right. Today I am announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Yes. My running mate will be Mr. Daffy Duck. I will be, Don't give me two seconds. I will be running on the Who Cares ticket. <laughs> I promise you everything you never wanted and less. I will be as honest as the day is long in December. Is it killing me? It's okay, on. that's it, folks. It's Where's the headquarters? Uh, Cameron Sen Senior Center? And Cameron Senior Center. <laughs> you are a miserable dog. <laughs> as New York as you get, his money's on the Mets. Which goes to show that Ed to Joe, who always bets his heart. There's Nikki and there's Audrey for some banter. And Tanta Barry chants a pair of songs. There's weather news and shtick, enough to make you sick. You'll be glad you came along.